Now I would like to invite the young, vibrant, and the young research researcher of India. And he is into so much into research. He has developed a lot of things, AI based, 3D, 4D. So today his uh, innovation, he will be talking on the four dimension holographic ophthalmic metaverse. Over to you, Dr. Prasanna. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this uh, kind introduction. Thanks to all the senior ophthalmologists, uh, TTL sir, R RP sir, Arvind Moria sir, as well as madam and uh, my fellow colleague John sir, who was one of my uh, inspirations during the Pondicherry days. He was an immediate senior to me. When I felt innovations can be done, he was a torch bearer for all of us. So yes, he is an inspiration. Yes sir. So he was an inspiration that we can be insane and still survive. So eccentrically insane. Thank you for everything, all the uh, respected seniors. So. Uh, I had the luxury to show some of my practical demos. So as I speak, uh, my colleague will also be coming to RP sir, Jeevan sir and showing the innovations. So, but uh, I've also had a recorded thing of the same in a more dynamic way. So this is the uh, Iron Man uh, or uh, Robert Downey Jr. in the Avengers movie. We all used, used to see this kind of holograms where you can see. Uh, can I have a pointer, sir? So he used to make a lot of these holograms. And uh, can we really do this? This is was science fiction. But can we do this fiction into reality? Was one particular question that always kept, kept in my mind. So we did do that. And how did we do it? So this is a patent protected technology of ours. And these were the six steps or the six innovations that led one to the other and the other to the other. So when he started doing it, I, I'm being a glaucoma person. My mentor used to tell, see the iris process and differentiate it from the a peripheral anterior sinicae. I never used to get it during my early days. So I started making simple animations of iris process and peripheral anterior sinicae at various different levels to teach my next junior. So that's how it's all started. And then I take them as metaphorical conceptual learning, take them into the real field and show them these are all the arborized processes. Whereas on the right hand side, this is a video where you can see the peripheral anterior sinicae. And when some juniors ask me, why do I do a PA? This is a 10 second video, my dear friends. I tell them this is why we do the PA. I'll play this again. So the, con the cause is happening here. The effect is happening here. So I wanted to convey concepts in a 10 second, in a less is more concept. Like, can we convey concepts very quickly? I tell them, see the posterior iris is in contact with the anterior lens. If it's an hypermetropica, you can see the aqueous doesn't go like this. And you can see that the aqueous is pushed. And there is a concave con convexity of the iris causing an angle closure attack. So these were the simple, simple videos that we started making and trying to convey simple con uh, simple concepts. Maybe uh, it may take more time to me to tell them in reality, but videos were able to convey it better. Again, this was a one minute video showing what is glaucoma in a single minute. So we showed the real patient's fundus, showed the increased vertical cupping, how does it increase, then again zooming in, showing where is the glaucomatous notch, then again slightly zooming in and showing where is the bionetting sign. So these are all simple video-based learning, but we started working on these kind of things, basic sciences where ISNT rule is breached. That was the fourth point, zooming out, showing the RNFL defect, and then bringing the fundus down and showing the visual fields of the same patient where there was a corresponding superior arcuate scotoma. And again, zooming out, I'm superimposing the OCT of this patient where the inferior RNFL is thinned out and there is a ganglion cell inner plexiform layer defect here. So these were simple, I mean, slightly complex concepts for a beginner, but we started making animations and we started making the whole ophthalmic curriculum as animation. So now the channel is 2000 subscribers nearing, sir. So we are trying to break all the videos as animations like SLT, uh, MLT. So this is a video where, so this is how we, we I started my journey where lot of video based learning. So because I felt video based learning, like differentiating a spot size between an ALT and an SLT and differentiating why we do the ALPI, which is a dying art in an oppositional angle closure like this. You can see that when I do an ALPI, this is what we try to achieve. And the same in a different angle, in a top angle angle, because I was more particular about this angle thing, whether the same can we see it from different angles was always the one that kept in my mind. Because the same thing when you see from a top angle, this is how it looks. When you saw it from a cross section, that's how it looked. When you see it from a gonioscopic view, the same spot, you can see how the iris is being pulled. So all these videos were made by us for a simple, simple ALPA, argon laser peripheral iridoplasty, which is a dying art. We tend to mug up it or read it. Can we show a video based learning? And even a simple removing the lens, we started making video as to how the iris is falling back. How the vectoral forces of the ciliary body is falling back when the cataract is removed. How the scleral spur is also slightly falling back when the chamber is deepening. So these were all, it's all like uh, six to seven years of our work that I'm just sharing. 
PAS, how it breaks during cataract surgery. So the more animations, the feedback that we got was animations, yes, it's slightly immature. Can you do something more like an unanimation? So we went into reality. Can we make structures more real like the cavernous sinus, circle of willis, the eyeball for that matter? We started using real confocal images. So previously we were using animation images. Now we started using real confocal fundus images, real seam flug, ASOCT, UBM, real gonioscopic images, how much reality that we can bring into the structures. And we started using this and we launched it in an Android uh, platform in a very simple way where the user can choose the button of choice that he wants to see, whether it's an autofluorescence, infrared. So we wanted to give the user the multiple choices of a single fundus that he wants to see of a different pathology, retinitis pigmentosa, RNFL defect, myelinated nerve fiber. So we started collecting the data. We started utilizing it in Windows, not only in Android. We then migrated into Windows. Then came the augmented reality. We then started wondering whether we can do it by cracking it in the phone. So this you can see, my dear friends. He's trying to take a class with the smartphone. This is the video that you are seeing, what he's seeing in the smartphone. It's timed in a synchronetic way, where when he takes it more deeper, you can see that it is being focused and he's able to see. As you can show, sir, and sir, yeah. So my friend will be just bringing a demo to you at your place. So you can see that when he moves the phone downwards, it is, it's much more oriented. An undergraduate or a first year postgraduate can never get to see the retina for what it is, at least as close as this, unless he's posted in a retina posting or he's very lucky to actually uh, have an assistant giving him some kind of steps. So we wanted to bring this teaching into the curriculum where they can have every structure the way the actually the surgeon see or the clinician see or even a senior person see. So this, what we started doing was, once we cracked the code and we brought the eyeball into play, we started using it for SLT, MLT counseling, YAG, YAG PA counseling, even patients. We started generating, we are now working on an EMR where you can select the patients. This is an NTG glaucoma patient where there is a trans hemorrhage here. And uh, this is again another case where there is an RNFL, beautiful RNFL defect here. So even in future, we can end up attaching the patients and three-dimensional or a four-dimensional EMR because the patient, when they are going abroad or somewhere else, he doesn't need to take a case sheet. He can take his own uh, three-dimensional case sheet and the doctor who's going to see him once again, for him, the uh, it's not going to be a bit head headache because it's going to be all there in the cloud and it is all there three-dimensionally. So this, this was the fourth innovation that we cracked when we went into four dimensions. That is the touch. That is a click sound that you can hear in the hollow lens. What happens is our vestibular activity is in such that when you touch, there's a click that makes you feel that you have actually touched the model. So that's the beauty about this particular uh, uh, innovation. That's why it's called the 4D, where you can see that the case sheets or the patient's uh, data is being analyzed uh, by my friend here in fourth dimension. He's going through the angles here, anterior segment examination, Miyake Apple view, and you can see the fundus examination. It's a translational software. If you have a different fundus photograph, that also can be incorporated. Then we started moving into anterior segment imaging, and we were able to create a complete OCT bounded uh, model in four dimensions with the AS OCT and the seam flag. So why this innovation? There is always the why. Whenever I made a mistake during my cataract surgery, my mentor used to show that you did an hydro dissection. That's why the posterior polar cataract dropped into the vitreous. So this plane is the plane that you have to do. It was always more theory or you used to draw it in a two-dimensional paper and tell me. But with this, when both of you can wear the headset, the mentor and the mentee, they can actually tell which is the plane that you need to keep the hydro cannula to actually inject so that the complication can be averted or it can be minimized at least for the neophytes. So this is my daughter actually. She uses this also obviously for her own reasons. But I feel the youngsters are much oriented towards this technology because when iPhone came, we never really expected or an iPad came. So it is something like this. I feel tomorrow every youngsters will be having this kind of headset. And Geo is currently working on a glasses. Uh, and even Iron Man had his own Edith glasses. So tomorrow it will be just the glasses where all the data will be there and the younger kids are much oriented. And I think why not uh, in future we have this. So currently we are also working on incorporating the OCT slices in the fundus. You can see this here. This is a fundus and this is a OCT that you can actually extrapolate out of the fundus and the different slices can be pulled up. So all this gives us a much better control where there is no blind spot. And this is one particular museum that we have at our center, uh, Mahatma Eye Hospital. And uh, this is a startup or department that we named as Mahatma Center of Moving Images, where you can see that we are working on more and more images. This is a complete neuroophthalmic model that we are worked on. And all these are end products. Uh, these are all ready-made. So a patient who walks into our clinic, uh, we do a fundus and an OCT. And if there are any other investigation, it goes into the database. 
Currently, it's the alpha testing stage. The software in 60 seconds with instantaneous chart time, it converts it into an hologram and different sections can be taken and the patients can be counseled. After treatment, the patient can be shown their own images and showed how it has reduced. Anterior segment, the more the imaging that you have, the more you can actually use it for different uh, explanations in histopathological level or at any levels that you want to see the structures for, it can be done. The phacodynamics parameters can be uh, trained in this by altering the structures. It's somewhat more a cost effective even you can see an ultrasound module here. We are working on an ultrasound module also. So this is more like a cost effective module of help me see because we are working on not only the headsets, it's in the smartphone, it's in the Android, it's in the Windows. You want to choose it, you can choose it in any platform that you want to. And last but not the least, you can show the puzzles also, Aji. We have also printed the puzzles and this, like an automobile engineer, the eye is completely printed in a puzzles. And this, my dear friends, is going to be the future of ophthalmology. Along with subtractive learning that we have shown here, you can see that you can subtract structures that you don't want to. You can dissect structures with your own fingerprints in the hands of your smartphone. And we are also worked on a smartphone simulator, which I had the luxury to show Arvind sir and other seniors in the front, where you can see you can use your smartphone front and back, just like a direct ophthalmoscope simulator. So this, my dear friends, is the four-dimensional ophthalmic metaverse, which is an amalgamation of six of our innovations. We don't see this as the end. This is just a start, a long way to go forward. This is my team. I would like to acknowledge my team because it's not a single man's job. And also our chief medical officer, uh, Dr. Ramesh sir and Meena ma'am, who are also here, who has all, always been our backbone in funding our projects and so on, on tolerating me for everything. So thank you once again. And our models are unique because we use real-time images so that makes our models much more unique and this is the QR code. You can take a scan of it and utilize it and share your feedback which will help us in making more innovations. Thank you. Excellent innovation. Any question from the audience? So this innovation will... Yeah, sir. please. Yes, sir. Mike, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, currently, we have worked on an MIGS simulator. Uh, as we speak, I'll just play this video, sir. Uh, because of want of time, I just finished it. Sir, currently what we are doing is, we have coded, as you can see, this is the fingers that is moving and he'll be showing it also to you. We are now working on an SACS simulator and a FACO emulsification simulator. It is slightly difficult for us to crack it because on a cost-effective plane, Bringing into that into matter, it's difficult. But an MIGS simulator, we have cracked it. So today, if you want to see a G1 simulator of MIGS, we have cracked that. So this is my friend who is placing the stent into the angle. You can see it turning green in color. So I think within a year, I think we'll be able to crack an SAC simulator. So the, another beauty is if this particular patient, the more imaging we do, the same patient's case sheet we can have. We can use the shearing force, the tension vectors. They can all be added. So the rexes can be made if they are click it. It runs Argentinian. So next level will be working on all those forces, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Arvind, sir, for once again giving me this wonderful opportunity to share the stage with uh, TTL, sir, and RP, sir. Of course, with you and ma'am. Thanks thank for thank taking all of us into a different world. Thank you. And thank this you. innovation will definitely help uh, in better teaching and also in the patient counseling.